tell, I, I think I'll tell you about our dad, the preacher. We, there was a whole class of us kids, and uh, it was hard to get us ready to go to church on Sundays. But, and anyhow, we were getting ready this time for uh, getting ready for the homecoming at church where the, we had all sorts of preachers and singers, and then we had dinner on the ground every year. Well, my brother and, and me just decided that it was so unfair for all of them adults to get to go through that line first. By the time we got to the kids, there wasn't much left on that table to eat. All the platters of fried chicken and ham and everything was already gone. There'd be some vegetables and, and maybe some kind of dessert that they didn't want to pick. So. We decided we'd do something about it. So uh, we uh, we decided they sent us to the field down at the end of the mountain, the, at the foothills of the mountain, told us to go pull weeds. This was a week before the homecoming. Well, we decided, we got down there and we seen old Aunt Viney over on the hill uh, puttering around and she uh, she just lives. I don't know whether she just forgot to die or whether the Lord was leaving her for some other reason. But uh, she is so old, nobody could remember where she come from or how long she'd been around. But brother and I decided we could use her because she just she had her little oven built outside with rocks and things that she cooked on and she cooked stuff the rest of us didn't much want to eat but anyhow uh brother looked at me and i looked at him and he says you know it might work I said let's go in by aunt viney to the homecoming so we went over and asked her if she wanted to come and she says, Lord, yes, she says, I've had me a possum out there in the pot, in, in, in the pen, uh, fattening it for uh, nearly a month. It would be ideal for the homecoming dinner. And the uh, brother looked at me and nodded his head. And I knew that we had, I knew then we were going to get something to eat that day. So uh, we invited her and we told her that we'd come meet her and bring her to the, to the homecoming. So we was just waiting. In the meantime, they sent they got us all in on Saturday night before the before the service. We all had to take our baths. And it done got too cold for them to take for for them to take us to the creek and bathe us. So Mom brought the tub in and she put it in the floor in in the floor and she put a little bit of warm water in it and she bathed the first little one and then. She added a nut some more warm water and she bathed the second and the third and the fourth. And I was the fifth. But there's always a kettle of warm water put in that water after each bath. But I was always so just, I don't know, I just plumb jealous of my oldest brother because by the time I got to him, he had got seven kettles of warm water put in there plus all the deposits that was made when little shivering bodies was put down in that warm water. And, but anyhow, they got us all bathed and in the bed, and then the next morning they got it, and we put on our Sunday clothes and all we went to church, and we had one preacher right after another, and all of that good food, you could just smell it with that. And... Uh, we had singing, and then we all lined up, and, I, and there was just platter after platter of fried chicken and steak and ham and all sorts of good food out there, and no Aunt Viney. We couldn't figure why Aunt Viney hadn't got there with her pot yet. But uh, anyhow, the food was all on the table, and uh, brother, at they, Daddy had called on the... A, a former preacher to say the blessing and we were sort of relieved because we knew how long he was going to pray. We thought maybe Aunt Viney would get there while he was praying and, and, and sure enough we looked out and there she was coming right down the side of the mountain across the field. 
And brother, he slipped out and run to meet her because he meant for her to get there with her pot. And uh, while he is gone, I got, got up and slipped out and I made a space right in the middle of all that good chicken and stuff. And uh, they, uh, they was a, everybody had their head bowed and, and I knew they wasn't watching us too close anyhow, but Brother Run met Aunt Vi and got that pot. Big old black pot with the lid on it and hand, he slipped up and put that pot on the table. And uh, just as old brother, old brother Phil said amen, brother took the lid off of that pot. And boy, the line went through there fast that day. Said, cause there laid that big old possum. She'd pulled the outside off and the inside out, and that's about all she had done to it before she put it in the pot and put all them sweet taters around it and put a big lid on it and put it, she had baked it all night. And I don't know for sure, but I think Aunt Viney was the only one got any of that possum. But, but all of them old, all of them other folks, they went through that line in a hurry till they got down to the, to the veggies and the, and the, Desserts and they got most of that, but you know something? We kids got more chicken and ham and turkey and stuff that day than we have ever got at a homecoming dinner. And Aunt Bonnie would come up and put that lid back on her pot, and she says, "Good gracious, there's just so much food here today that I'm going to be able to eat on my possum all week." <laughs> but we sure did appreciate her possum. <laughs>